everyone, it's Casey here from Melbourne Reiki and Wellness again with another short chat. Uh, today's, or this week's theme is focus and intention. Um, I find this to be a really fascinating topic because there is so much to explore on the topic of focus and intention. Um, I thought I would start with intention first. And it's funny, like Oprah often talks about intentional living or living with intention. And it's, it's a really great quality to have. Um, just having an intention or in Sanskrit, uh, it's Sankalpa. So setting an intention is kind of like um, having an idea or um, a resolution, like a feeling of resolve and determination that really comes from your heart space. And when we set an intention, we're putting out that idea or putting out um, that, that statement in our mind um, that really comes from our heart. And it kind of directs our energy in a conscious way forward in the direction that we want. So for example, um, whenever I, I Reiki clients, or that people come in for a Reiki healing, I always set an intention um, at the start of the Reiki session um, I always thank Reiki for being here, myself and the client for being here. And I always um, intend for the Reiki healing to be for the client's highest will and good. And then I go and I continue into the Reiki healing. And that just gives Reiki energy um, a direction and a focus. It also uh, draws in, um, I guess, a conscious awareness of um, what I'm actually doing there, what, what the purpose of the session is. And I think that can be really powerful, not just as a practitioner, but also as um, a Reiki or a recipient of Reiki. Um, it is definitely possible to feel the difference when someone is treating you with intention versus someone who is not really treating you with intention. Um, intention and focus is very similar. So when we have a specific focus, whatever we are focusing on actually grows bigger so I always use this example um, as a yoga teacher over the last 10 years or so, um, you know, I've, I've dedicated so much time and energy and passion and love into teaching yoga. And it's funny, whenever I go for a long drive, you know, to the countryside somewhere with a friend or whatever in the, in the passenger seat, and I somehow manage to see yoga studios everywhere. It might be over the hill and around the back of a tree and behind another fence. And I'll say, oh, I didn't know there was this yoga studio in this um, town in the middle of nowhere. And the passenger will be like, where? Like, I can't see any yoga studio. What are you talking about? And I'll be so tuned into this particular thing because it's been the center of my focus for so long that I will notice yoga studios or someone carrying a yoga mat or someone wearing yoga pants anywhere. It's like I, it's within my peripheral vision and, I'm, and straight away it's drawn into my awareness. However, if someone else is in the car and they might be more interested in, say they're a mechanic, for example, and they might say, oh, I didn't realize there was a, a mechanic up the road here, or I didn't really notice, oh, see that car over there, like that's an amazing car. And, and for me, it's not really within my interest. So most likely I'll, I'll miss that. I, I won't even see the mechanic there. I won't even notice the fancy car. I'll just be focusing on yoga, <laughs> most, most likely. So whatever we focus on definitely grows bigger and we we seem to draw that particular thing whatever we're focusing on into our reality a lot faster interesting fun fact so humans really only can hold about seven to nine things in our mind at any one moment in time there is of course so 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 many more things happening in the world at any moment in time but we as humans, we can't, we can't focus, we can't absorb all of that information all at once. If we did, it would blow our brain up. We'd be way too much. So the fancy thing that our mind does is actually draw, focus our attention on the things that matter most to us. So me being a yoga teacher or a Reiki healer, I'll focus on health and well-being most likely. Other people who have a focus on sport will focus, will draw, the, those things will come into their awareness. Or someone else who might have an interest in cooking might notice different restaurants and so on. So whatever you're focused on, that will be majority of the seven to nine things that will hold your attention. And then everything else that is going on around us or around you at that time, we will either delete, so we won't even notice that thing over there or that thing over there. 
or we will distort the information so we will kind of change it to fit our focus whatever it is or we will generalize so we will lump everything over there into one group so that is one chunk of information that we need to remember rather than being so many different things it's really interesting because um it's it's renowned like if for example, there's a car accident on the road and there are like maybe five different witnesses and they all go to the police station to, um, to give a statement. And police will often read through the statements and they'll be completely different. The car will be a red car that smashed into the blue car in one statement. In another statement, it will be a white and a black car. Um, in one statement, it will be a female driving. In another statement, it will be definitely a male driving depending on who the person is that is witnessing the event depending on what their focus is and what their interests are and what they spent a lot of their time thinking about and doing will be how they see the car accident or how they will experience that particular event so we are not really the greatest um memory or we are not the greatest um at remembering certain events because we will always distort or delete or generalize information and then we'll park the memory that matters the most to us in our mind which is why people kind of remember things very differently at times and which can then cause perhaps some discussion or arguments um, potentially as well so let's come back to focus what you focus on grows bigger so we can use this to our advantage because knowing that in our minds and knowing that about our our mind and our body we can then choose what to focus on and what we focus on will have a direct impact on what we're feeling or, or the emotions that we experience. So for example, if I choose to focus on um, how ugly and fat and how incapable and how stupid I am, all these really low vibrational negative self-talk um, things going through my mind, then that will have a direct impact on how I'm feeling. I'll probably feel pretty depressed. I'll probably feel pretty low. I won't have much confidence. I won't want to go out too much and talk to people. I want to stay at home and just kind of hide away. But if I choose to focus on something more positive, like, oh, I've just signed up to this new boxing class, which is true, by the way, uh, my shoulders are definitely feeling it today. Or I'm choosing to focus on the fact that, hey, I've got an able body, like I can go for walks and I can go for hikes and I can go and join an exercise class. Like how amazing is that? Then it will change how I'm feeling. I have the ability to make different choices and whatever I choose to focus on is going to impact how I'm feeling quite dramatically. If um, a really, really easy example is, um, you know, now we have this ability to remember being human, so I can choose to remember different things. If I choose to remember, say, for example, a, an experience that I've had in the past that caused me pain, like um, almost seven years ago, my mum passed away. So I could cast my mind back to that moment, that night, and I remember it very vividly. If I really spend time thinking about it and immersing myself in that emotion and the feeling and remembering all of the details using all of my senses, I know exactly how I'm going to feel. I'm going to feel sad. I'm going to feel upset. I'm going to feel that same grief um, and that feeling of shock that I was going through at that time. Or I could choose to focus on different elements. So I could cast my mind back to that time that mum threw me this amazing birthday party when I was 12. Or I could cast my mind back to the time that mum used to take me to ballet practice and, and do my hair and it was really like a beautiful mother-daughter bo uh, bonding time. Or I could cast my mind back to any one of a million positive um, life events that I've had with my mum. And guaranteed, I will feel differently. I'll smile, I'll feel happy, I'll feel grateful for th those experiences. My body will be in a completely different vibrational state to if I'm casting my mind back to a memory that's going to cause different emotions like sadness and grief to come up instead. We have the ability to choose our focus and we also have the ability to set an intention. Um, a lot of people I find kind of just wake up in the morning and then they just float through their day without really knowing what they want to achieve or what they want to get out of the day or what they want to put out there in the world or, or kind of what they want to experience. There's kind of a lack of focus. Um, and many people might know that as, um, or just, you know, the usual rat race, like get up, go to work, come home, have dinner, go to bed, same, 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 again and again. 
And I think like I, lot of, I see a lot of Reiki clients coming to me and they just feel a bit stuck and things are the same and nothing's really changed and the words stagnant and paralyzed and fearful and not really sure what to do come up a lot. And so this, this feeling of like just plodding through life with no intention is quite common, I think. Um, it's definitely um, not a bad thing. I'm not putting any judgments on people that don't live with intention um, because I understand it and it's and it's an easy thing to do because it takes a lot of awareness to live intentionally, I think. Um, also, living without a focus is not a bad thing because we tend to maybe live more in the present moment or we tend to just go with the flow and see what comes up and that can be really powerful as well. But I guess the benefits of living with intention or setting an intention is that you can be more conscious about what you're want, wanting out of life and also what you want to um, give to the experience of life. So for me, my words this year are um, service and trust and letting go of expectations. And I'm finding more and more that with my business, my intention is to serve and my intention is to help people find balance, help people to find their confidence, help people to be a better version of themselves and heal past traumas, dissolve emotional blockages that is kind of holding them back from being the best self or the best version of themselves that they can be. Um, that's my intention and that's my purpose in my business. And that gives me direction, which is really great. If I didn't have intention, then it would be really easy to just kind of like have shiny things syndrome, like, oh, I'll do a little bit of this and I'll do a little bit of that. And I love that thing over there and I love that thing. And all of a sudden I don't really have a lot of focus. I have too many things that I'm trying to juggle all at once that it becomes very obvious to potential clients um, that I don't really have a focus. And so therefore they don't really know what I'm about either. Living with intention is not just for business. It can be um, in a relationship. So having an intentional relationship, wanting to support and love and inspire each other to lift each other up. Um, I think when, when you're in a relationship with people, whether that's a romantic relationship or any other relationship without intention, then it's quite um, easy for the relationship to kind of go through the ups and downs. And when there is a down, um, it's, it's very easy for the relationship to break apart because there's no focus and no intention. So living with intention, when you get up in the morning, it almost, it's like spending a couple of minutes thinking about your day. What do you want to give to your day? What do you want to achieve? What do you want to put out there? What are the things that you want to manifest into your world? Remembering that what you focus on grows bigger in your life. And so what you're focusing on, you're putting more energy into that thing, which means it will come at you faster and, um, and quicker. So really thinking about the things that you want rather than thinking about the things that you don't want, because otherwise you're going to draw that into your experience instead. It can be really nice just to spend like a Sunday afternoon or a couple of hours at the end of the week or at the start of the week thinking about what it is that you want out of the week ahead what it is that um, you want to give to your family, give to your business, give to your relationships, give to yourself as well, what it is that your life is really about. Um, and when you have a sense of purpose and when you have a sense of intention, um, I feel like life is, you become more aware, more consciously aware of what you're doing. You have reasons behind why you're doing things and you have like a guiding sense of, energy behind what you're doing. Intention, remember, comes from the heart space. So when we have a true intention, it's like you're listening to what lights you up, what brings you joy. Um, Joseph Campbell, a uh, philosopher, uh, a philosopher and an author, he's incredible. One of his um, affirmations or sayings is follow your bliss. And it's, it's like really like listening to your heart speaking to you, like what's, what's going to spark joy in your life and really diving after that because that's the thing that's going to um, keep your vibration high, that's going to bring a smile to your face and generally speaking that's going to kind of give you that energy, that passion to go forward and be your best self. Um, I hope this chat has been kind of inspiring and maybe um, thought-provoking as well. 
Um, maybe after listening to this, you might spend just a few minutes um, with your journal or a notepad and just kind of jot down like my intention. What is my intention? What is what are, what are the things that I want to give back to the universe or give back to the world? What is it that I want to get out of the world as well for myself and for the people around me that are most important to me? And then maybe set an intention for tomorrow or the rest of the week, um, even for the year as well. Find the words that resonate with you um, and notice how that changes your energy. Notice how that changes the direction. Notice how that changes the decisions that you make in your life. If you have any questions, please contact me. If you need support, I do offer coaching sessions. Um, these sessions are perfect if you just want to kind of like brainstorm your ideas, work out what your focus is and, and take charge of your confidence, take charge of your life and live with a little more intention and awareness. That's it from me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Until next time, see you later.